It's bigotry trivia time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's bigotry trivia time. And we'll feel it all out. All right, hello, welcome everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, my name is Ali with Big of Tricks Entertainment. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's gonna be a fun one. We have general knowledge trivia coming up right now. Before I go any further, for anybody out there who may be playing for the very first time, let me just remind you that you do not only wanna be here on YouTube, you also wanna join the online game platform. It's very simple, open up any internet browser and go to online.bigoftricks.com and then enter in that code TRICKS3 that you see on the screen here, online.vegatricks.com, enter in TRICKS3. If you follow the link that we posted on Facebook, you won't have to put that code in. It'll take you right to this screen here where it's gonna ask you for three pieces of information. The first is the name that you wanna go by tonight in the competition. That could be your name, a nickname, a team name, anything like that. The second is the state that you're playing from. That's just for fun. We like to track where people participate from. And then lastly is your Bag of Tricks loyalty program number. If you don't have one yet, there is a link in the description of this video on YouTube that you can use to sign up. It's a free program. Uh, and that is how you can actually earn prizes with Bag of Tricks. I'll explain that in just a second. But once you have those pieces of information in, just click on go. You'll see this screen that says the game will begin shortly, and that means that you're all set for now. There's nothing else you need to do until we start the game, which I will do here in just a few minutes. I still see people joining. So uh, while we're waiting for people to join, I'll say once again, hello, and thank you for being here. Tonight is general knowledge trivia, which means these questions are about anything and everything. There are all sorts of random questions. Uh, some of them will be simple. Some of them will be tough. They're all worth points, and the individuals with the most points at the end of the night win Taco Bucks. What are Taco Bucks, you may ask? Taco Bucks are our online bag of tricks currency. So we deal these out to the individuals who uh, finish in the top places, or if you say something really funny or something clever, you know, I might dish some your way. Uh, overall, it's just an online currency that you can eventually turn into real prizes. So you can use Taco Bucks to purchase things like Bag of Tricks merchandise, beer and brewery merchandise, pop culture merchandise, and limited edition merchandise like the framed and autographed photo of Taco right splat in the center of this advertisement. Advertisement, if you will. Uh, so that's why you want to be a part of the loyalty program because you can only earn Taco Bucks if you have a loyalty number. That's how we assign them. Um, Again, if you don't have a number, you can sign up. There's a link in the description of this video and we can get you all set. I'll email that out as soon as we're done here. So with that said, we'll talk about the game. Uh, actually, in just a second, we also have trivia coming up tonight, in two hours, nine o'clock central time, Shit's Creek trivia, all sorts of fun. Shit's Creek trivia, uh, whether you're a huge fan of the show or you just started it, that's okay. I don't think there's any really big spoilers in our questions. You can. Yeah, you can join even if you've just started watching. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have some fun giveaways uh, for tonight's game. Uh, actually, could you do me a favor and go grab um, the onesies that are on top of the the cricket and the stickers are on the somewhere else, the table, I think, maybe? Uh, thank you. Uh, we have some fun giveaways during Shit's Creek tonight that I'll mention here in just a little bit. Uh, but do please join us for that if you're a fan of the show or even if you don't like the show and you just want to hang out and chat and not pay attention to the election for an hour. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, so with that said, both of these events tonight are free to play, but we do graciously accept any and all donations or tips that you'd like to send. These links down below will be here all evening. Uh, Venmo, PayPal, and Zell Quick Pay. We really appreciate any and all donations that you send because that's what allows us to continue to do these games. Um, I prefer to put them on for free like we're doing and just ask for donations, um, but we do have to pay the bills and, and pay for the platforms that we use to host these games. So that's what your donations and your tips help us do. And I do know that uh, we've already received one or a couple tonight. Thank you, Charles, so much for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so those things will be here all night if you feel so inclined. Uh, we really appreciate it. Also, 
Tonight's game is sponsored by Downtime Coffee. It's a delicious, locally roasted craft coffee. Uh, if you're into coffee or you're looking to get into coffee, this is a great place to start. They do very small batch, single origin, and soon to be some delicious blends uh, of coffee. You can see two here, the Ethiopian Yirgachev and a Papua New Guinea. Uh, delicious, delicious coffee. They roast a different bean every week. If you follow them on Instagram, at Downtime Coffee, uh, you will actually find out tomorrow what they're going to be roasting on Sunday. I heard it's gonna be delicious. Uh, something out of Africa. So keep an eye out for that. And thank you to Downtime Coffee for sponsoring tonight's game. I do know somebody out there should have just received some Downtime Coffee, I believe, uh, in the mail today. So uh, with that said, I mentioned we have some giveaways during Schitt's Creek tonight. Um, if you're a fan, you'll appreciate these. If you're not, I don't know, you might have a baby anyway. We have some little baby onesies. The baby, the baby. Uh, we actually have a few of these to give away. We're gonna give away uh, these things based on how many people join and play tonight. Um, and then again, for the Schitt's Creek fans, just we have a whole bunch of awesome Schitt's Creek stickers that we're gonna be giving away. I'll explain how that works here later tonight, actually during that game. Uh, for this game, for general knowledge, we have Taco Bucks to give away, which you can then turn into prizes. Um, with all of that said, Taco's here with me, Gina's here with me. Anything that else that I was gonna mention that I'm forgetting that you know of? I don't know, I was just gone for a minute. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, this is tonight, uh, and uh, tonight at nine we have Schitt's Creek Trivia, and then those will be the last events publicly for this week but we do have a very very rare sunday night game um it is a fundraiser so that is a type of event where you have to purchase a ticket to participate but this one's special and it's gonna be a lot of fun um it is a disney plus trivia night um cool. yeah so all of you people out there that you know enjoy disney and marvel and star wars um, this is going to be the kind of night for you. This is actually benefiting an organization called the Safe Haven uh, oh, Foundation. Haven. Yeah, uh, there's a event on Facebook that I can link to. You can purchase tickets. I think the tickets for this are... I think they're only... $10. Yeah, I'm right. $10 to play. Uh, and this is a big one. I think they have a a big prize um, yeah there's a hundred dollar prize on the line so this Sunday is Disney plus trivia it's at six o'clock Disney plus trivia uh, via Vega tricks we're hosting for a safe haven foundation um, and again it's Disney plus trivia so Star Wars uh, Marvel Disney Pixar all sorts of any basically anything you can watch on Disney plus um, I kept it pretty surface level, so nothing gets too deep, uh, but we do have some Mandalorian questions with the second season coming out um, now. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then back uh, on next week, we'll be back pretty much to our regular schedule. But as I mentioned, um, times will fluctuate a little bit as we figure out the times going forward for our schedule. I do know on Monday we have a special trivia with the Fountaindale public library um, they do one event every month with us now and this monday is 1980s trivia 1980s trivia this monday at seven so we'll have general knowledge after that at nine um, i'll give you the full rundown um, on our facebook page here probably tomorrow but a lot of fun events coming up this weekend and this week so please do check out our facebook page if you haven't um, but anyway i gotta get this started i am just blabbering on uh let me come back here so if you haven't joined the game yet, do make sure that you do that right now. Last opportunity before we start, online.begatrix.com. Game code is TRIX3. If you haven't played trivia with us before, listen closely because I'm going to give you the rundown. Tonight we have a mixture of multiple choice questions and then questions you're going to have to type the answer in. We're going to start with multiple choice just to ease you into it. How that works, I'll ask you a question. You'll see it on the screen. You'll also hear me ask it over YouTube. And then you'll have to answer on your own device, whether that's on your computer or your phone, wherever you're logged into the game, you're gonna answer. I'll ask the question and then I'll start a 25 second timer. Once that timer begins, you'll see four options appear on your screen, A, B, C, and D. One of them is correct, three of them are not correct. If you click on the right answer, you're going to earn up to 150 points. And I say up to because 
the points start decreasing as the timer goes down. So what that means for you as a participant is the quicker you answer, the more points you'll earn if you are right. So 150 points maximum, but as soon as that timer starts, that starts clicking down. Um, two things to be careful of. Number one, if you click an answer, you can't change it. So if you're clicking really quickly and you hit A by accident, you can't switch it to B, C, or D. Um, so make sure you know what you're clicking before you do. And second, you never lose points for wrong answers. So some of these might be tough. They may, you may have no idea what the answer is, but excuse me, you can always guess. You have a one in four shot of getting it correct, even if you have no idea and you don't lose points if you're wrong. So basically no reason to not guess at all. Um, if you're still wondering exactly how this is gonna work, that's okay because the very first question here is gonna be a practice question. Um, so I will throw this up on the screen here in just a second. Uh, before we do, I just wanna say hello. Hey, John J, Amy JK, Middleton Lynn, Steph, what's up? Hey, Michael, welcome back. Christiane, Mert Whirlin, Charles, thanks again for that donation. Kim, hello, Mr. Rice Crispy. Hey, Lindsay Davis, Becky. Lots of people tonight. Julie, E, what's up? Hey, Jen Sterna, got some special questions for you tonight. Bella, is that Bella? What's up, Bella? Who else is out here? Hey, Jess and John, welcome. All right, I think that's everybody that I see here, but there are certainly more people that aren't talking that are out there, so hello to you as well. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm gonna get this first question on the screen, uh, but I do wanna say thank you to Laura, thank you to Lindsay for the donations. Thank you to Crystal for the donations from Team Florida, thank you. Uh, and thank you, Lauren, uh, from Downtime Coffee for the follow on Instagram. Here we go, first question. So again, if this is your first time playing, this is what it looks like. You can see the question and I'll read it to you before you see the answers and the timer hasn't started yet. So once the timer starts, you'll see the answers pop up. This is the practice question, so no points up for grabs, just for fun so you can learn the system. Question number one, what is the name of your host today? That's me, what is my name? Is it Curly, Larry, Mo, or Ali? What is the name of your host today? Jess, you did get your coffee. Good, there was a bonus coffee in there. Let me know what you think. That's actually the, the coffee that's gonna get roasted this Sunday for everybody else. So you got a little preview of it. Oh, Jen Sterna, I will let Downtime Coffee know that the coffee is fantastic. Thank oh you. <laughs> I will relay the message to them. Uh, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. I'm having a lot, a lot of downtime coffees having a lot of fun roasting. They told me um, Five people said curly one person yeah, yeah. said Larry three people said mo 23 people said Ali and that is the correct answer Ali That is my name. Thank you very much. Here we go. Question number two Which on-screen Disney duo inspired the hit song you've got a friend in me Was it Pooh and Piglet? Mickey and Minnie, Dory and Marlin, or Buzz and Woody? Boom, roasted. Uh, that's actually, I roasted um, coffee for my groomsman, uh, Amy JK, and that's what I named it. Boom, roasted, BFF blend. Yeah, that was a fun one. Hey, Emma, what's up? Sing in Randy Newman's voice. I don't think anybody can do that except Randy Newman. Uh, this is a double social. Great job, everybody. It is Buzz and Woody, of course, from the original Toy Story. You got a friend and me. Cheers, everybody. Taco is currently cuddled up on his squirrel. So appropriate song. <laughs> All right. Question number three. Speaking of Disney, the character Rafiki appears in which of the following Disney animated films? The character Rafiki appears in which Disney animated film? Is it The Jungle Book, The Lion King, Pocahontas, or Mulan? <laughs> Julie and Emma, oh my God, she's actually here this time. Yeah, Julie's been here all week. 
you'll wish I wasn't here. <laughs> She's got your number. She's got your number, Chris. All right, here we go. Everybody's in. One person said Pocahontas. 34 people said The Lion King. And the correct answer here is Simba, The Lion King. Rafiki is from The Lion King. Great job. 97% uh, of you got that, so that's another social. Cheers, everybody. Question number four of our very first round. The Sirens of Titan and Cat's Cradle are two of the first four novels written by what science fiction writer? That should say which. Uh, the Sirens of Titan and the Cat and Cat's Cradle are two of the first four novels written by which science fiction writer? Is it Philip K. Dick, Aldous Huxley, George Orwell, or Kurt Vonnegut? You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. MIA since Stranger Things. Here for Schitt's Creek. Awesome, awesome. Hello, fresh. All right, everybody's in. Let's see who knows their sci-fi writers. Uh, three people each said Philip K. Dick. 13 people said George Orwell. 16 people said Kurt Vonnegut. Correct answer here is Kurt Vonnegut. Good job, 16 people. That was a tough one. 46% of you got it right. Good job, good job, good job. Off to a good start. Uh, pretty tough one, though. Question number five. <laughs> We're talking about Lord of the Rings. Which of the following statements about the one ring from the Lord of the Rings is a lie? Three of these are true statements about the one ring to rule them all. One of them is a lie. Which of these is not true in regards to the one ring in Lord of the Rings? It makes the wearer invisible. It was forged by the Dark Lord Sauron. It is made of mithril. It reveals an inscription if heeded. Which of these is not true? Really? I heard there's an Aaron and a Chuck out there. Hello, Aaron and Chuck. Welcome. This question, well, lucky for you, Emma, this is the only Lord of the Rings question tonight, I think. Did I ever check out Post Animal or DJO? Uh, no, I think I was beyond the pale when you gave me that recommendation last time. I'm going to write it down. Um, I was drunk. <laughs> Wait, I've never heard that one. I just made it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, all right. Here we go. Let's see. Uh, 13 people said it makes the wearer invisible is not true. Uh, it was forged by the Dark Lord. Sauron is not true. Uh, it's made of mithril is not true. 14 people said, four people said it has an inscription. Uh, so the one that's not true here is it is not made of mithril. Mithril. Um, Bilbo had a mithril uh, purus, if you will, uh, a nice little thing that he wore and he gave to Frodo, saved him uh, at least once pretty seriously, but the ring was not made of mithril. So good job if you put that. That was a tough one. Again, we started off a couple of tough literature questions here. Uh, here are the current standings. Currently in first... Just here for the gritty memes. In second, Jen Widener. In third, Pennsylvania Fan Club. In fourth, Emma. In fifth, Ahu, Werewolf in Lockdown. In sixth, Steffi Star. In seventh, Kornacki's Khakis. Ooh, I like that. I one. like that. In eighth, Lindsay. In ninth, I can count. In tenth, the devil went down to Georgia. Uh, in eleventh, Jeff D. In twelfth, Captain Cheesecake. 13th, I thought the election was next Tuesday. 14th, Steve Buscemi needs taco box. <laughs> I don't know. 15th, a whole numero uno. 16th, penis cuddling. 17th, mama lens. 18th, JMO. In 19th, currently, wine and whiskey. Weird. That's what we're drinking. But yeah, I have the wine and she has the whiskey. Uh, Drin in 20th, there's a name I've heard before. In 21st, Friday night date night. That's cute. I'm glad you're here with us. Hey, Sambuca and Salsa. Welcome, welcome. Team Cream in 23rd, Merton Learn in 24th. Team Name, Team Name in 25th. Uh, the Lacoste Alligator in 25th, tied with Team Name. Uh, pizza and Whiskey Kinda Night, I'm here for that. In 27th, Hasera 28th, Eliza Hamilton 
in 29th. Let's get Kanye in 2024 in 30th. That's one of my favorite memes so far is people have been posting like, maybe Nevada, like maybe Kanye won Nevada and they just don't know how to tell us. <laughs> That's why they're dragging their feet. Uh, in 31st, the big fact hunt. In 32nd, Miss LaRocca, Julius Pepperwood, 33rd, not rights in 34th, and Jason in 35th. Uh, so, if this is your first time here, I will not read all of the team names every time, but I do like to do it at least the first time here because I love the team names. Uh, and certainly, the standings will change, uh, can change, and will probably change. We have a lot of points still up for grabs. So That's, that's like... You saying that to me was just Oh like, my god, did you I just give you PTSD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things will change. change. There are a lot of points still out here up for grabs. We've got a couple different rounds oh to bring god. in. How many paths are there to the victory? <laughs> oh, that's just ooh, we're Oh Jesus. It. Yeah. Send help. Oh god. Oh, I love it. All right. Anyway, back to the questions. That was Do incredible. You have a map? I <laughs> Do you have a flag? Question six. Which of the following songs does not refer to a location in London? Which of the following songs does not refer to a location in London? And we're talking about the name of the song, basically, um, would have a reference to a place in London. Which of these does not? The Guns of Brixton by The Clash, Brighton Rock by Queen, Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty, or Waterloo Sunset by The Kinks? Which of these does not have a reference all right, what, which of these does not refer to a location in London? Ah. Everybody's in. So two people said The Guns of Brixton by The Clash. Eight people said Brighton Rock. Seven people said Baker Street. Uh, 18 people said Waterloo Sunset. That's a little tricky. Uh, the correct answer here is actually Brighton Rock by Queen. Brighton is a city approximately 47 miles south of London. Um, there is Waterloo is a completely separate place as well, but there is a uh, area of London, uh, a neighborhood of Waterloo, uh, and this is in regards to that that location. So the correct answer here is Brighton Rock by Queen. Uh, so Jess and John disagreed, and they, oh, she would indicate a London Calling. Yeah, that would have been a little bit easier, <laughs> London Calling. Uh, number seven, speaking of music, I don't know, that's a weak reference. Played by real-life rockers Zach Wilde, Jeff Pilson, and Jason Bonham, what was the name of the fictional band from the 2001 Mark Wahlberg film Rockstar? Was it Wild Rats, Blue Shammer, No Vacancy, or Steel Dragon? Oh, I just blanked. What's the name of the band from Almost Famous? Yeah, still water. Yeah. <laughs> you can answer the question. Well, it's, you know, it's a question about a fake rock band. But Jason Bonham, John Bonham's son, uh, are the other names also fake names from movies? Um, no, I think these are all fake. Uh, Wild Rats is like Wild Stallions. Um, from Bill and Ted. <laughs> and the other ones I might have just Googled random stuff. Stillwater. Yeah, thanks, Jen. Uh, we were talking about Almost Famous here in the background. Uh, I've asked that question before. That's what gave me the inspiration for this question because uh, I think this is certainly a less popular film. Uh, we have a crispy social to kick off question seven. 69% uh, of you correctly said Steel Dragon. Steel Dragon. Cheers, everybody. Question number eight. The Battle of Saipan, Saipan took place during which conflict? The Battle of Saipan took place during which conflict? Was it World War I, World War II, the Korean War, or the Vietnam War? Battle of Saipan, Saipan. I picked Steel Dragon because it seemed like the one Mark Wahlberg would pick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That makes sense. Isn't no vacancy? I think that sounds right. School of Rock. They did a reunion, like uh, 
a reunion song for the School of Rock just a couple of years ago, recently. Two people said World War One. Seven people said the Vietnam War. Eight people said the Korean War. And 16 people said World War II. The correct answer is World War II. World War II. Great job. If you put that, you got points. Question number nine. The, the National Museum of African American History and Culture opened up in 2016 in what U.S. city? National Museum of American of African American History and Culture opened in 2016 where? Is it Atlanta, Los Angeles, New York, or Washington, D.C.? Cool. Twenty twenty election officials picture round. Yeah, we'll do the a picture round of all the map guys, the map boys. All right, everybody's in. Twelve people said Atlanta. Twenty one people said Washington D.C. There are some fantastic museums in Washington D.C., and this is one of them. Washington D.C. The correct answer. So good job. Twenty one of you got points for that. Question number 10. British alt rockers, the Boo Radleys, named themselves after a character from what classic novel? The Boo Radleys are a band named after a character in which novel? A Clockwork Orange, On the Road, To Kill a Mockingbird, or Catch 22? Oh, look at the dichotomy. This one is hard, says Emma, and one of my favorites, says Julie. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right, everybody's in. If you could write down how, boo, red, baby. Four people said a clockwork orange. Two people said catch 22. 28 people said Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird, and that is correct. Boo Radley. Uh, great job, great job, great job. Question number 11 is the final multiple choice question of the evening. And here it is. New Yorkers escape the concrete jungle <laughs> by descending on the city's vast parks for recreation and leisure. Which of the following options is the largest park in the city by area? Which of the following options is the largest city in New, uh, the largest park in new york city by area is it central park van Cortland park greenbelt park or pelham bay park which of these is the largest park in new york city by area maggie wimp what's up nice to see you it's been a little while you know the times have been different the days have been different. Forgot it was Friday. Oh, I don't blame you. Uh, here's a true story, and I think I'm okay, so I'll share this. Uh, but yesterday, was it yesterday? I completely forgot it was November. Gina said, oh, yeah. hey, I'm going to hang my schedule on the fridge, so you have my schedule here. And I go, oh, okay, October. And she said, what the fuck are you talking about? It's, it's not, why would I hang October? It was bad. It was bad. Uh, Emma, it's not a trick question, um, but it's certainly not an easy question as everybody took a breath. 31 people said Central Park. One person said Pelham Bay Park. Two people said Van Cortland Park. I will say Central Park is the largest park in Manhattan, but not the largest park in New York City. That is Pelham Bay Park. Uh, New York City is much more than just Manhattan. We hear about Central Park because it is incredible. Uh, but the largest park by area in New York City is Pelham Bay Park. And actually, it's it's quite larger. Um, largest parks in NYC. Uh, so Central Park is 843 acres. It's not even in the top four. Flushing Meadows is bigger. Van Cortland is bigger. Greenbelt is bigger. And Pelham Bay Park is the largest by far. It's in the Bronx. It's 2,765 acres. It is four almost four it's three and a half 
Central Parks, uh, Pelham Bay Park. So now you know a Lindsay social. Cheers, Lindsay. Sneaky hobbitses. Yeah, well, I mean, why wouldn't we be talking all five boroughs, Emma? I see where you're coming from. But yeah, New York City is all five boroughs. Uh, so yeah, I can admit it was a tricky question, but now you know, and you can use this one on your friends. Uh -huh. I know. Uh, just here for the gritty memes is in first. Emma is in second, even with the complaining about that question. In third, Jen Widener. In fourth, Lindsay. In fifth. I can count in six. Uh, Pennsylvania fan club, seventh, the devil went down to Georgia. In eighth, Steffi Star. In ninth, Ejo Numero Uno. What's up, Christiane? Do you, th do you think maybe she's playing from work? Because she's not, you, mm -hmm. yeah? She's not really maybe. chatting, right? Yeah. Um, and I thought the election was next Tuesday. Uh, my chat box just froze. So, there we are. The more you know. Yes, exactly. Uh, okay, so my friends, things are about to change. Let's talk about what's coming up in this next round. As I mentioned, no more multiple choice. So here is what's going to happen. Boom! New camera setup. Let's try it out. Yay. So for the next, for the rest of the game, we're done with multiple choice questions. Instead, I'm going to ask you a question, and then when you answer, you actually are going to have to type your answer in. All right. So, how it works, I'll ask you the question. You won't see the text box. You won't be able to type until I start the timer, just like before. But when the timer starts, instead of seeing four options on the screen, you will see a text box and you'll have to type your answer in. That's the major difference. Um, the, the difference in terms of scoring is twofold. Number one, the points are going up. For the next 10 questions, it's worth 250 points apiece. And you earn all of the points if you're correct, and you earn none of the points if you're wrong. There's no more in-betweens. So if you're right, you get the points. If you're wrong, you get none. So take your time. Try to type to the best of your ability to spell as well as you can so I know what you're going for, and I can give you the points if you deserve them. Um, the other difference in terms of the questions is the next five questions are all part of a single, excuse me, mini bonus round. Uh, what that means is I'm going to ask you a question they all have to do with each other. I'm sorry, they don't have to specifically do with each other, but they're all from the same, the same category. Tonight, um, this category is about films. Actually, this and our picture round is about films. So we have a very film heavy night. Um, this next round though, how it's going to work, we'll still do one question at a time, 250 points a piece. For the next five questions, I'm going to name three films, three major motion pictures, and you have to tell me the one individual who appeared in all three of them. We've done this round before, but not these specific questions. So you might recognize the round, but these are new questions, new actors, new films. Uh, so I will read you all three films, and then you have to tell me who was in all three of them. You have 25 seconds to do so once I start the timer. Here we go. Question number 12. Name the actor or actress who appeared in all of these films, Rush Hour, Shanghai Noon, and Rumble in the Bronx. Who appeared in all three of these films? Politely declined a Gina Camp. Hello. Ooh, Saz's takeout. Oh, yeah. mm. Making old fashions with chilling a bottle of champagne. Champagne. Oh, nice. Fruit wine for later, nice. Herbertlinger. Um, oh, hey, Christiane. Hoping everyone comes up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Radish wine? All right, everybody's in. Oh, somebody even knew. I'll take this. It's close. Uh, Jackie Chan, my fave. Yes, I do love him. Uh, the correct answer is Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Uh, Rush Hour had Chris Tucker. Um, Shanghai Noon had Owen Wilson and Rumble in the Bronx probably my well, my second favorite Jackie Chan film uh, ooh, that sounds delicious number 13 name the actor or the actress who appeared in all three of these films Elizabeth the aviator and the curious case of Benjamin Button you know this one All right, 
right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see what we said. Lots of different ways to spell this. <laughs> Don't know any of these movies. Oh, somebody with some hearts. I love it. Crap. Blanchette. Kate Blanchette. Not Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, the correct answer here is, in fact, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. So a roundabout Lord of the Rings reference. Uh, question number 14. Name the actor or actress who appeared in all of these films. Sling Blade, Bad Santa, and Monster's Ball. If Emma were a boy, she would have been Jackie. Oh. I don't know what my name would have been. You were going to be Jamie Lynn Spears? Jamie Lynn. Oh, you were really going to be Jamie Lynn? Oh, that's cute. Oh, your mom's on here, right? Was she going to be Jamie Lynn? I don't know. I should ask my mom. I don't know if they had a name picked out if I was a girl. My Maybe favorite. Vincenzo. I've told you this story. My favorite story, I have a friend who, uh, when, when the doctors said, hey, do you want to know the sex? They said yes. And they said it was going to be a girl. And it turns out he was a boy. So they have the, oh, congratulations, you had a boy. And then they said, what do you want to name him? And he said, well, I, I, we didn't have anything picked out. And the dad's name is James. And they literally named him Jameson, like James' son. James that's son. how you guys named him. Jameson. Oh, that's James how so many names. Yeah, Williams. Like a lot of last names came from that. Williams' son. James' son. But that's his first name. It's fun. Uh, did your mommy? No, Bella. Oh, could somebody tell me if these movies came out in the 80s? Yeah, yeah these are older movies, Bella. Early yeah, sorry. These are a little bit older. Uh, Monsters Ball was 2000. Bad Santa was around then. Billy Bong Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, Maxwell Thomas. That's a cute name. Looks like your dad won, Jen. Question 15. Name the actor or actress that appeared in all of these films. This is even older, Bella. I'm sorry. Cleopatra, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and National Velvet. Which actor or actress appeared in all three of these films? But to be fair, uh, Bella, I think this is older than most of the people in here now. We're, we're out of most of people's range. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, but I know it. Tina knows it. My grandma looks like Oh, yeah. Everybody's in. <laughs> Crap bag. Some more as well. Shit. Black Bear the Singer? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> the correct answer is Elizabeth Taylor. Liz Taylor. Anything close, you got points. Um, there's only one more. Here we go. Final one. This one, yeah, still probably uh, a little bit older, but not super old. Name the actor or actress that appeared in all of these films. Suicide Squad, Dallas Buyers Club, and Requiem for a Dream. Uh, it, yeah, some kind of bug, not a fly. Got back up to like 76 degrees here today. So the bugs came out of hibernation for the day. All right. Ooh, most, not most, but a lot of people went the opposite way thinking it was the, the correct answer is a woman on this one, and it's not. <laughs> Jared Leto, such a fine piece. Uh, the correct answer is Jared Leto. 30 seconds to Mars. I think we just turned that into a crispy social. So we'll cheers to that. Cheers, everybody. We are going to get into the next round here in just a second. But before we do, two things. I want to give you guys uh, a second to take a look at the rankings. And could you do me a favor? I'd love to get you a drink. Just grab another bottle of wine. Same, same wine? Um, yeah, unless we have another red wine that you want to open. No, I mean. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. All right, here are the standings. Currently, just here for the gritty memes in first still. Emma still in second. Look at that. It's only 41 points behind. Should I be trying to do math live on the air? Uh, in third, Jen Widener. Great job, great job. Everybody else, take a look. See where you're at for Taco up here. Uh, and then we'll get into the next round here in just a second once I refill my drink. Uh, this is a completely different round. This is a picture round. This is similar to what we've been doing, 
But rather than asking you specific questions, I'm going to ask you one question, and the difference for each question will be the picture. Uh, so I'll start this in just a second. I'll give you all here just a minute to refill your drinks if you need to as well. Uh, I'm sure we can all take a breath. I can check on the chat. I'm very far behind. You guys are talkative, and I love it. Uh, Requiem is a horror movie. Yeah, tr I, I know more people that are scared of that film than many people are scared of movies that are classified as horror movies. Aaron Wall and Nats. Yes. Hey, Aaron. Nice to see you. Uh, Bella, that's okay. You, plenty of opportunities for points still. Plenty of opportunities. Can I say hello to Taco for me if I can't? That's I can say hello. Taco Bella says hi. <laughs> He thought that I had a uh, special T-R-E-A-T -E for him, but I didn't. So, hello from Bella. Is yeah. Taco says hello back. Here, we'll see. Perfect. And a yawn. All right, here we go. The next round is a picture round. I did find the tripod. Uh, I did not find the tripod, Chris. I bought a new one. Um, so the next round is a picture round. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to show you a single screenshot of a film, and you just have to identify the film. That's it. I'm going to show you one single frame, one screenshot from a film. You have to tell me what film it is. So I mentioned... I usually, I don't know if you guys notice this, I usually try to stagger this so that we don't have a whole bunch of um, film or TV uh, questions between the picture round and the previous round, and I didn't do that tonight. I apologize, so we just had a movie round. We're doing another movie round, um, but it's already in. We're doing it. Uh, so I'm going to show you one frame, one screenshot from a film, and I want to be very clear, Gremlins 2 uh, fiasco aside, I do want you to be specific because some of these films will be a part of uh, a series, maybe a, a, a trilogy or further. Um, so for every one of these answers, you need to be specific to the film. Um, if it's if it's the, the first one or the second or the third or et cetera, um, if it happens to be part of a series. So be as specific as possible if you want those points. Otherwise, that's it. Here we go. Uh, question number 17. Name this film from the screenshot. Be specific. Don't appreciate the added layer of anxiety. And then the next comment from Jen was, yes, so feeling better. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look. Yeah. All right. You guys did well here. Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park 1, uh, Indiana, not Jurassic Park 2, Jurassic Park, Fossil Wires. This is Jurassic Park, the original. So if you put one or you just said Jurassic Park, you got points here. Great job, everybody. Uh, so that's it. That's how this is going to go. Uh, you got one, Bella. Great job. All right. Uh, Jen Sterner, let's see if we can keep it up. What is the name of this film from this single screenshot? What film are we looking at here? We talked about washing hair. I haven't washed my hair with the shampoo. Oh, yeah, the no poo. The no poo. Yeah, no we talked poo. about that. I know what you're doing. <laughs> frankly, I'd appear for it. Lindsay Davis. There's that sass. No uh, this is Jurassic World. This is the newest, uh, the first one in the new series with Chris Pratt and my boy Blue. Uh, so great job if you put Jurassic 
world. Great job, great job. Question 19. Name this film. What film are we looking at here? I like Julianne Moore. Me too. Every time I go get my hair done, I show a photo of her with color reference. Aww. <laughs> Charles, I hope this continues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Everybody's in. And there, yeah, there are certainly two acceptable answers here. This is Jurassic Park 2. Uh, also known as The Lost World. The Lost World, Jurassic Park 2, Jurassic Park Lost World, Jurassic Park The Lost World. Um, how many effing Jurassics are there? I mean, the Jurassic period was like 60 million years long, so let's find out. Question number 20. Great job. 20, you've got that right. Question 20. What film are we looking at here? I wonder. What film? Seen no Jurassic movies, Lindsay? Great time to start. What? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, honey. Glad Jurassic World was second, because otherwise I'm gonna keep guessing that for every answer. What was I? Uh, I was doing a private event the other day, and it was for a company, and somebody or some team like we did 35 questions and around question 24 they just got stuck on this tom holland so Kate? no 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 they just always answered tom oh. holland and like even on questions that i'm pretty sure they knew i think they were just keeping up the like we're gonna answer tom holland for every question oh weird just out of nowhere yeah this is the target the the hardest one of this round uh this is Let me make sure I give, yep, there we go. Yeah, that's close. Uh, no, no repeat, no repeat. This is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the newest, newest film in the Jurassic Park uh, series, Jurassic World series, if you will. All right, final question. I will tell you by process of elimination, my friends, here's a helpful clue. Most of you can get this one by process of elimination if you have any idea about all of the Jurassic Park films that have been released. What is the name of this film that you see on your screen here? There's another dra after Fallen Kingdom? Oh my god. Yeah, that yeah, that was 2018. There's a new one coming out. Oh, there's a new one. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this was the newest one that's out right now. Well, not this one, but the last one that we saw. Uh, Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. All right, a lot of you at least use your... Karen gets eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> what would you do if you had a dinosaur for a pet? Uh, I would have to qualify that question by which dinosaur. Um, you'd probably die. Yeah, most dinosaurs, that would be me. The Grey's Anatomy episode with the plane? Are you trying to make me cry right now? I still haven't gotten over Lexi. Let's not even talk about it. Uh, Jurassic Park 3 is the correct answer. Jurassic Park 3. Uh, so shout out. You guys just got JP'd. Uh, that was an entirely Jurassic Park round. Who even am I, Ali? Uh, you know, I just wanted to do it. So shout out to anyone out there who may randomly love Jurassic Park films and been asking for a Jurassic Park round for as long as we've been doing online trivia and I hadn't delivered. So I hope that I've at least halfway delivered. Uh, here are the current standings. Emma. Oh God, Jen, you're out. Jen, uh, Emma is in first place. I thought the election was next Tuesday, it was in second. Kranaki's khakis, first in my heart, but third on the board. Uh, everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. We'll get into the final round of questions here in just a second.
All right, all right, all right. We've arrived at the final round. These questions are random. <laughs> I promise they are not all Jurassic Park questions. There are 10 random questions. The only difference from the first round, it, actually there's two differences. Number one, they're worth more. They're worth 300 points. Uh, you're still typing your answer in, okay? So it's not multiple choice and they're worth many more points, but they are random general knowledge questions. We're gonna do one at a time. Uh, and don't forget, you get all the points if you're right, none of the points if you're wrong, but you don't lose points if you're wrong. So take a guess. The only thing you can't do here is cheat. No Googling, no looking up answers, just Give it your best shot, see what you come up with. Here we go, 10 questions. Uh, let me take a look. Uh, some of these simple, some of these tough, here we go. Question number next one, 22. What actor played Freddie Mercury in the 2018 biopic Bohemian Rhapsody? Which actor played Freddie Mercury in the film Bohemian Rhapsody? Biden over 20K, love it. No more Jurassic Park. Bella, you got your wish. We're done with Jurassic Park. Julie, I, I did know that he has a twin, this individual. I learned, I think he, he brought him to the, uh, to the Oscars or something. Well, that's what we have Jess and John for, for our updates in the comments. So thank you, because I obviously can't be looking, and I appreciate it. Uh, many, many, many of you have got this. The guy who played the Pharaoh in Night at the Museum. Yeah, technically, um, that is, you're referring to the right person, but I'm looking for the name. It is Rami Malik. Rami Malik, Mr. Computer. Bella loves Queen says, oh, I redeemed, yes! All right, back in. I enjoy Queen. You like Queen? Love Queen. Yeah. I had Queens. That was one of the CDs my dad like bestowed upon me. Uh, an old, Bella may not know what this is, but a binder of CDs. Um, he gave me a binder of CDs, and Queens' greatest hits was in there. And yes, yeah, I mean, the rest is history. He has fantastic taste. Yes. Uh, question twenty-three for our Canadian friends. If I had a million dollars, a popular song. song by which Canadian musical group? If I had a million dollars. I know what a CD is, but I don't know binder CD thing. Yeah, uh, Bella, with yeah. CDs, you, you had to keep them all, and if you kept them in the actual cases, took up way too much time uh, space, so you take them out and you put them in like the, a card book, like a book of CDs, essentially, and then it's zipped up together. And you can put it in your car. Put it in your car and it melts. No, I didn't melt. But it, remember the ones that went on the visor? Oh, I sure do. Those Mine would melt. Fall down. Yeah. Mine never melted. Oh, yeah. Mine were always, some hot sun, I boy. guess I needed one of those window blockers. Wouldn't have to eat craft dinner. Yeah, John Jay, but we still would eat craft dinner. We still, with fancy ketchup. I'm not gonna let his fans defend him since I was a small child. Can't I'd be rich. Uh, first time I ever saw bare naked ladies, which is the correct answer. Great job, seventy five percent of you. Um, was on the Weird Al Yankovic. TV show. So oh, my close personal friends, uh, Canadian band Bare Naked Ladies. And they were That's like really 20 years old. You have to keep them. Yeah, I still have all my CDs, uh, including that Queen's Greatest Hits. Question 24. In 2003, which U.S. state was officially declared the birthplace of aviation in 2003, which U.S. state you have a one in 50 shot was officially declared the birthplace of aviation. Don't forget, you don't lose points if you're wrong. So take a guess. Bella, you. Weird Al made the Hamilton polka. Yeah, have you seen the video of Lin Manuel Miranda listening to the Hamilton polka for the first time? There's a video out there of him listening to it, and it's adorable. Emma, happy to not be the youngest. Biden might speak to it still. Mm. I like Jeff, that. let us know if we got to cut in. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just stream it through here. All right, everybody's in. So we went half, no, a little more than half for North Carolina. 16 people, 12 people said Ohio. 
Uh, so don't at me. This is a little tricky. The correct answer here is Ohio. Orthi Ohio. Obviously, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, very famous um, for, I believe, the first flight there. Uh, but the birthplace of Ohio, uh, the birthplace of aviation has been named Ohio. That's where the Wright brothers were from, uh, Ohio. And pretty much every single astronaut has come from Ohio. Uh, so the correct answer here is Ohio. The Dayton Flyers. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, John got stumped by this at another bar trivia years ago and never forgotten it. See, that's what trivia is about. Hear it once, remember it. All right, here we go. Question 25. Whoa. The adult human skeleton is made up of how many bones in a typical, normal, I don't want to use the word normal, in a typical human skeleton in an adult is how many bones? Uh, I'm looking for numbers here. How many bones make up the typical adult human skeleton uh, we'll zoom through trivia here not actual zoom we'll just finish through trivia oh, we don't have much yeah we only have a couple questions Bella should know this because you studied the states last year yeah I know your, your mom's uh, lifeline for state capitals uh, so you have many more when you're a baby Nice little soft bones, and then they fuse together. Uh -huh. And by the time you are considered an adult, you have 206 uh, in the typical human adult no, I skeleton. I wanted them to fuse together. <laughs> yeah. I prefer them My flexible. My right as a human to have unfused bones. Uh, Emma's still in first. I thought the election was next Tuesday in second. The devil went down in Georgia. I said that wrong earlier. Um, and I appreciate that team name so much more now that oh, I read it correctly. Yeah. The devil went down in Georgia. I who is that? Somebody told me who that was. Um, Chris and Janessa. Chris devil. and Janessa. Yeah. Devil went down in Georgia. Is Chris and Janessa? Yeah, I'm giving. You guys can confirm that I. I am. I'm giving points to them right now. That's why I'm trying to figure out who it is. I mean, I can look it up, but uh, let me see. I'd be rich. Yeah, 101. Yeah, I'm giving them 10 points right now. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's Chris. 10 bonus points. So now you're at 11.25 bonus points. Great job, Chris. Love that team name. Yeah. And I love it because I, mean, I missed it. I'm screaming it for five minutes or anything, but whatever. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Uh, let's try this split cam for the end here. All right. Question number 26. Just a couple left. The Scarlet Letter is a historical fiction novel written by which American author? Which author gave us The Scarlet Letter? Peter Lindsay, Peter. yeah. Thanks for holding back the sass on that one time. What would you say? I have never read this. Oh my gosh! You've never read it, well. But I saw you easy. I saw Easy A, so it's like the same thing, basically. I mean, yeah. Oh, did Maricopa just drop? By the way, Easy A is a good movie. Yes, it is. It is. I got a, I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. I have M M S B T M. Uh, the correct answer is Nathaniel Hawthorne, and that's ninety percent of you. So that's a big old social cheers, everybody. Number 27, who was the first female prime minister of a European country? Who was the first female prime minister of any European country? Aww. Sassy parents are amazing. Philadelphia. That's a show I think I'm gonna rewatch uh, for like the fourth time. <laughs> Have you been winter one more and like definitely needing some? Yeah. Like, when you just wanna happens. laugh and feel better about yourself as a person, you watch Always Sunny. Uh, all right, everybody's in. The correct answer here 
not super well liked. Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, the correct answer. Uh, but many of you got it, 71% of you. Question. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> uh, question 28. Uh, where are your shower curtains? Papua New Guinea, a delicious coffee that Downtime Coffee roasted recently, is bordered by which country to the west? What country is bordered on Papua New Guinea to the west? What is the west bordered country of Papua New Guinea? I didn't count the UK as Europe. <laughs> I mean, they're still in the continent of Europe. They're just not part of the EU. <laughs> I love that. Hello, Brexit. Hello, Brexit. That's my band name. Dibs. Uh, everybody's in. <laughs> I like that more than one person put Mama New Guinea. <laughs> Bordered to the west of Papa New Guinea is Mama New Guinea. Uh, that's not right. It's Indonesia. Indonesia. Chuck and I are arguing what continent, what's on? Indonesia, uh, Papa New Guinea? Or uh, th this is uh, part of the Australasia, I think. Or it's just Asian. Oh, As a kid, ooh, Pokemon, probably. It depends on how young you want to go. Oh, te when I was younger, uh, like single digits, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But when I was probably 11 and 12, it was Pokemon for sure. Oh, I was right. Uh, it's part of the continent of Oceania, uh, which I believe is part uh, that it encompasses Australia. I there. never in a million years would have Yeah, that. Oceania. Um, Australasia. Are you, like Oceania, like uh, in Lost? Mm -hmm. Like where am I? Mm -hmm. uh, geographic region that includes Australasia, Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia, all the Asias, uh, including <laughs> Indonesia. Uh, but oh, anyway, I am being very, very sideswiped here all right uh question 29 what is the name um what is the name of the pigment found in your skin and hair that gives them color uh, more of this pigment makes it darker less of it makes it lighter what is the name of the pigment in your skin and hair that gives them color Emma, I knew that, but I'm good at geography. Oceana. Oceana. It was, it was flight 815. It was oceanic. Oh, okay. 815. I only remember because that was the area code where I grew up. All right, everybody's in. As long as you're close. It's not melatonin. That's totally different. It's not keratin. That makes up your fingernails. Uh, and rhino's horns, for that matter. Melanoma is a bad thing, uh, which the name will make sense now. The correct answer here is melanin. Melanin. Uh, the words are all very similar. Yeah, I never realized. Yeah. Welcome to human science, or human body science. So many friggin' Thank words you. that all you're sound welcome. the same. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, great job, though. 87% of you got it, so we'll social. Cheers, everybody. Question 30, sports question. Who holds the record for the most home runs hit in a single MLB season? Go for Who holds the record for the most home runs in a single MLB season? Yeah, only two questions now, Bella. Uh, I'm a dink. <laughs> Apparently, Emma is good at lots of crap. Emma was going to say the rhino fact, beat you to it. Uh, JFC, wait, what would you say? Oh yeah, can we just call? Can we just call many things? With or without the shit. I looked into this, Chris, and I did not find an asterisk. I, as far as I can tell, this stands. Um, I looked it up, and uh, as far as I can tell, per well, I guess that's not the MLB website. Let me just double check here. I 
I guess. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to go without. Let me just look here. Yeah, nobody put the person who would be non-steroid anyway. Uh, so the correct answer here is Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. Um, and so before there's any argument, if you want to break it down uh, to people who didn't have steroids, Barry Bonds is first, Mark McGuire is second. So he also would not be correct. And then the third person would be Roger Maris, um, 61. Nobody put Roger Maris. And as far as we know, he didn't take steroids back in the 60s. So, And then Babe Ruth. Uh, sports <laughs> question 31 final question final question uh, before uh schitt's creek trivia tonight at nine o'clock less than an hour away no it's been a little bit uh there, here's a very recent question this is the newest question we've done in a long time which video game studio created the incredibly popular online game fortnite you know it. You hate it. What is the name of the video game studio who created the game Fortnite? This is a question I got. My other trivia I did pre-COVID. Oh. We'll be there. Yeah, John. Yeah, John. We got stickers. We got bebe onesies. No announcements. Just for your, your baby. Yeah, right. We post, I posted that on my Facebook, and like 16 people thought that I was announcing that Gina and I were having triplets. It should be really scary because I drank like um, 13 drinks at our wedding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last month. Well, and this election has not been light on the drinking. Figured one baby. Oh, okay, no, no, no. Okay, okay. I, I get, I, listen, I can admit, I see, if I saw that post on somebody else's Facebook, I probably would have thought the same thing, um, but I didn't intend it like that. Is this another Jurassic Park movie? No. Damn straight. Yeah, Jen. Um. <laughs> that happens to many, many, many people. Oh, no. I had Top Chat on. Oh, no. Oh, God. It's because my, you? well, because it froze earlier, and I just was in a hurry. I opened it back up. Uh, many kids in my school still play Fortnite. It's annoying. I believe it, Bella. Any game that's about shooting and doing that stuff, but a, a major component of it is dancing, it sounds fun to me, but I just I don't think I can get behind it. The correct answer is Epic Games. Whoever it is, I hate him. I'm a teacher. Yeah, that's fair. It's not Rockstar. It's not EA, not Xbox Valve, Activision, Capcom, Atari. Uh, it is Epic Games. All right, that's it. That's all the questions. So... Let's take a look at the final standings. Before we do, just one more reminder. Uh, we do have Schitt's Creek trivia coming up at 9, so 50 minutes from now. Um, if Biden is going to speak, hopefully it's between now and 9. I would appreciate it if they work around my schedule. Um, but in any case, if you are a fan of Schitt's Creek, and please, we're on day four of the yeah, <laughs> please come back and join us um, at 9 o'clock. If you're not a fan of the show but you have nothing going on, come out, hang out in the comments. We always have fun, as you guys are certainly doing right now. I appreciate um, all of you being so chatty, I, I really do. I'm not being sarcastic. So uh, here are the final standings. If you're in first, second, or third, you're going to earn yourself some taco bucks. First place is Emma. Second, the devil went down in Georgia. Third, I thought the election was next Tuesday. Emma, uh, do you have your own loyalty, or do you want it to go to your mom? Chris, I've got your number. Who is in third place? Who is in third place? Uh are they not showing up? No. It's oh, weird. sorry, everybody. That's just my face. Julie, her mom. Julie, Julie her mom. What's going on? Oh, no, and you no, know her number. Just give Emma's points to that second place <laughs> team. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Emma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jess, we were in first before other people got points. Yeah, so obviously there's some rigged. There's something going on. Oh, Jess God. was in first, uh, and all of a sudden they weren't. So uh, we are going to look into this. Uh, I'm going to take it all the way up to the top trivia court that we have. Okay. Yeah, and Jess, I guarantee, you know, basically you've, you've won. Honestly, you've won. We're going to stop the count. Uh, I, but legitimately, I don't know who that is in third place. I thought the election was next year. I can look it up, as I mentioned. Um, but if you're hearing me say this and you know who you are uh, next year. Oh, I've got your number. Never mind. I got it. All right, that's it. Codis of BOT. <laughs>
Uh, all right, that's it, guys. Thanks so much for playing trivia right, tonight. See you in an hour. See you, not even, minutes. yeah, 48 minutes. We will see you very soon. Bye bye.